Dubs. Why is the society where I grew up so scared to talk about Dubs? Why is Dubs constructed in such a negative way? Before I tell you why today, I want to invite all of you to think about a time you experienced Dubs in your life. It could be Dubs about your job, your relationship, your religion, even your identity. Let me bring you back in time. It's 1994, almost 27 years ago, when I was born and raised in Myanmar, which is also known as Burma. I grew up in the ordinary family and both of my parents worked for the government. So we did not have a lot of money and they sent me to public school in Myanmar. Looking back now, I have no idea how I survived the public education system. And I will tell you why. So when I was in primary school, I was asked to write an essay about myself. I remember I'm being very excited about, you know, talking about my grandmother, my grandparents, and my brother, and also things I like to do in my free time. But my English teacher did not really have interest in my story. Instead, she provided the template that all of us have to memorize to write down exactly in the examination. So this is exactly what we have to write down. My name is Ao Ao, my father is Ubar, a farmer, my mother is Do E, and a teacher. So even though myself was not about myself anymore, we have to follow exactly what the teacher told you to do and did not question a thing. So at the early age, I experienced a system in which we are not allowed to ask questions or even express ourselves very freely. In school, we have one objective which is to pass the examination with the flying colors and to get the good grades. And they always tell you that good grades will get you, you into medical school. So as a product of public education system myself, after graduating from high school, without really knowing what I wanted to do, I applied to medical college. I was very lucky that I got in. Everyone was so proud, they were so happy for me. Did I really want to go to medical school? Was it even my choice? But the point I'm trying to make here is that in Myanmar, we are not allowed to make choices. I knew many of my friends went to go to medical school just because of their parents. I knew some of them were not really interested in studying medicine, but they wanted to study art. And I know a lot of people who are so passionate talking about politics and philosophy. But you know, I also understand why parents in Myanmar do not want their kids to study politics because an interest in politics may a tough life in prison. Most Burmese were never ever given a chance to explore their passion or even have doubts about what they do in their life. It is even considered taboo to question. So we don't have a lot of options to choose from. We, don't, we never talk about our passion or our interest. We talk mostly about getting a job or choosing acceptable professions such as doctors or engineer. So like every parent's dream of sending their kids to medical school, I decided to go there. You know why? Because I wanted to be a good son. I want them to be happy for me and proud. One day at least, I went to medical school for one day and I dropped out. So I was not a good son after all, am I? So after dropping out from medical school in Myanmar, I started preparing to study in the United States. I have full of self-doubts. The only thing I was good at following what the teacher told me to do and memorizing everything. So I sure had doubts in my capabilities, doubts in my choice, and doubts in myself. Combining a hard work with a prayer, I guess, I got into college in the US. Moving on, it's 2012, almost 10 years ago, when I moved to Indiana, which is in the United States. It's in the middle of nowhere. As you see in the picture, it's full of confies. The real problem started here. One fine evening, I was going to a nearby supermarket with one of my best friends. On our way back, I got mad by two people, and they tried to rob me by punching me and trying to get everything I have, including my wallet and iPod. Here I was the first time being in the United States at the age of 17, being attacked by two Americans. I was traumatized. 
the, the, the funny thing is that the first thing that came to my mind immediately was, wow, this is so different from what I have seen in Hollywood movies. Was it really worth it to leave everything behind? Most importantly, a safe environment I had back at home. So I started doubting more about whether leaving home or going to colleges in the United States was, was the right thing to do. I kind of regretted moving abroad at that time, but life moved on and so did my doubts. Another new doubt developed very quickly, and I'm sure this is all of you can relate to. How many times in your lifetime have you questioned your passions or belief? I can tell you I surely have many, many times. I did not know what my passion was, and I was not certain what major I should choose. So there's, here, there's no teacher to tell me what to do, and I finally have a choice, which became a problem, ironically. So at that time, I already changed my mind from journalism to economics to sociology and computer science. Whenever I talk to my relative or friends at home, they always ask me, what are you studying? And I kept saying, undecided. So I knew that this is not the answer they wanted to hear, right? So I replied saying that, you know, I was interested in studying human behavior, so I would probably pick psychology as my major. <laughs> you know, when you talk to Asian, the, the immediate response uh, after hearing you study in psychology was that, are you gonna get a job? <laughs> well, and they got very upset with my uncertain thoughts. And they always told me to stick with one thing, do not have doubts, no uncertainty. You know, it is true when I think about it, people I know from home, my community, they never talk about doubts. So I guess I am one of the lucky ones to explore a few options. And I finally have discovered my passion for neuroscience. And I declare it as my major. Because science makes sense to me. Science is all about uncertainty at first. And we find scientific tools to discover an answer which will clear up our doubts. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. But at the same time, science do not always answer your questions. So my doubtful journey continues. By the end of second year in college, I started to question about my belief in Buddhism. I'm a devoted Buddhist because of my society. Whenever I mention about my doubts in religion, to my relative in the US, they always told me to stop being crazy and stop questioning. Here again, they do not want me to have doubts and they want me to simply believe in it and move on. The more I study science, the more I question about my religion, particularly in the aspect of karma in terms of sexuality. Let me be clear here that what I'm saying here today do not truly represent the teaching of Buddha. These are just traditional belief. So many traditional people in Myanmar believe that homosexuality in the current life came from as a karma of committing sexual assault in previous life. Even today, many Christian churches are teaching that homosexual behavior is sinful. It is really extremely frustrating to believe in something like this without any proof or evidence. But you know, I learned from my experience that it's okay to have doubts and it's okay to question my belief. So why were we not allowed to have doubts in the society where I came from? I strongly believe that this is a result of living under military dictatorship for 50 years in Myanmar where there was no freedom of speech nor expression. Many of, many of Burmese people, many of us were never thought or even allowed to question about ourselves, our belief, our identity, and religion. If you have been following the news lately, many people in Myanmar are reliving under the nightmare of military junta since military staged the coup in February this year. So left alone, self doubts. Imagine many people go through the challenges when they start questioning about their self, their identity, and their religion. 
in such an oppressive culture. Now I want you to take a moment to think about yourself or someone you know struggling with self-doubts, particularly doubts about identity. There are a group of people who are very close to my heart up and day today, and I'm very honored to share some of their story here. After graduating from college, I got a job in HIV and clinical trials unit in the city of Philadelphia, which is also known as City of Brotherly Love. So in Philadelphia, for three years, I worked very closely with people living with HIV. I once met a 19-year-old African-American man, along with his pregnant wife. Sadly, that day, the unborn child learned that his father was HIV positive, but not that his father had interest in men. Can you imagine how this young man go through his life hiding his own identity? Take a moment to think about it. I'm sure you have heard of a story like this before, of people who are never given a chance to explore their doubts or even live with their true identity. Imagine how this kind of story will go in my home country. Last year, I lost one of my friends to ACE in Myanmar. I knew he was struggling with his sexuality and I knew that his parents were very traditional and religious. Also, Myanmar, being the former British colony, they have Section 377 of the Pentagon, which prohibit homosexual behavior. So it criminalizes the intercourse against the order of nature with the penalty of transportation for life up to 10 years imprisonment. So we are living under the law that can put you in jail for your identity, for your belief, or even the preference of whom do you love. As a result, people forget their sexuality and hide their true identity. Yes. On the other hand, because of the stigma against sexually transmitted diseases, people do not tr seek treatment or prevention services. Sexuality doubts are caused in life. And this is how I lost one of my friends. So remembering those alive or dead who are never given an opportunity to explore or even have doubts with their sexuality, I decided to become a sexual and reproductive health advocate in Myanmar. So this is a photo of my live talk talking about masturbation. So I became this masturbation guy in Myanmar, and here again, I was very doubtful how my parents were going to think of it, you know? Um, they took it okay, so, so it was not too bad after all. So I mainly talk about HIV and sexually transmitted diseases, also focus on sexual orientation, and most importantly, reinforce the nature of the fluidity of sexuality and embracing sexual identity. So we cannot afford to lose more people over being true to themselves. To this day, I have known a lot of individuals who are struggling with their sexuality doubts. And I also want them to feel reassured that it is okay to explore their doubts and find joy in the process. So what I really want to say is that doubts are an unavoidable part of life experience. When the pandemic hit last year, we all see the nature of impermanence in life a friend. It is really terrifying. We all have doubts about if we are going to make it through our tough days. This pandemic has left us many lessons to learn. And for me, the biggest takeaway is, when in doubt, find joy in it. From thinking about what to cook for dinner, what to wear, moving to a new city, or having a new family, starting a family, doubts will always follow us. And certainty, that thing, can be very intimidating. Here, I want to take a moment to recognize my privilege and the privilege many of you have to be able to acknowledge our doubts. 
I thrive through my doubts and I'm extremely grateful that I'm given an opportunity to explore my doubts. Having doubts about my academic choices helped me find my niche. My belief about my religion are more well-defined than ever before. So I believe that finding joy in having doubts is a good practice. The most liberating thing in your life is being true to ourselves, living without any doubts. That feeling is so liberating and amazing, isn't it? But whenever you have doubts, remember that there's a joy in having doubts. Also remember that doubt is a window to welcome in many challenges and life experiences. If you are feeling a bit generous, please think of those who are never given a chance to even have doubts in their life. Without a doubt, I truly look forward to the day where people can express their doubts freely and live with their true identity. Thank you.